Hi guys, I'm Kasha, welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our coffee times to discuss movies in horror but today I don't have a movie for you, I have a TV show review because we're here to talk about Swarm. It's coffee time! So this TV show came out like a couple of days ago and I knew that I wanted to watch it. It is a new um, show on Amazon Prime. It's just one season as far as I know and it looked really interesting to me. The trailer gave us enough to hook us but it also didn't really spoil the major things and so I was really intrigued and it looked from the trailer that it was going to be a weird trip so I didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into so let's discuss it as always here spoiler free Donnie Glover and Janine Naber are the creators and the people behind Swarm and this is a psychological horror thriller television series for Amazon Prime. The series follows Dre who is a young black woman obsessed with a singer and that obsession that she has is gonna take her through a really dark path. Now the TV show has only seven episodes and they are fairly short. None of them are longer than 40 minutes so it is quite bingeable. The series tells the story of Dre, a young woman who is obsessed with a fictional pop star with a fan base known as The Swarm. The show is a dive into Dre's life, her fandom and how it takes her to dark unexpected places. Swarm stars Dominique Fishback as Dre and Chloe Bailey as Dre's sister Marissa. When I started watching the show I was quite intrigued to see if this was based actually on real events because there is a disclaimer at the beginning of every episode that says that all resemblance with true people and true events is intentional <laughs> um, which I thought was quite interesting I've never seen a show do that um, and apparently it is not exactly based on something that happened a hundred percent but it is inspired on some fandoms and some fans that would do absolutely anything for their stars. Dre is obsessed with an R&B artist called Nija. She is obsessed to the point where she would do anything to get concert tickets and she would fight anybody online or in real life that says anything negative about her queen bee. As Dre becomes more obsessed with Nija, her obsession is going to lead her through a really really dark path and we all know already based on the trailer and the description that this story follows murder. So we already know that Dre is going to turn violent and it's going to escalate at some point <laughs> into murder. The trailer is not going to give away who she kills or anything like that but she does give away that she might have killed someone, she's covered in blood and um, if you put two and two together you can assume that she's going on a killing spree. Nigel's fan base is called The Swarm so that is where the title comes from and Dre is so obsessed that she even has like accounts for the fandom and she is immersed in it all day every day and she creates a very unhealthy obsession with Nija and her music and she used to share this obsession with Marisa, her best friend but Marisa is now older, she wants to have a boyfriend, she has other interests in life, she's trying to make a career for herself in the makeup industry and so Dre feels abandoned even by her best friend. And even though I said it is not exactly based on anything in particular, it is in a way inspired by Beyonce and her fan base but I'm guessing that because of you know legal reasons they were not able to use those names and they decided to change the artist to Nija. But anyway the show doesn't really focus on Nija, we barely see her, that's just basically our main character's obsession but we don't really get to see much about that and I think it's a good thing because the show is not particularly about the star, um, it is about Dre and about her mental kind of decline throughout the whole series. But we all know that Beyonce's fans are called the Beehive and of course this one is called the Swarm so it's kind of very similar and also if somebody says anything negative about Nija, 
people would post comments with bees meaning that they would sting the person that they were coming for them so you can see you know the relation here swarm already sets a very interesting tone with the first episode it is a zigzag of emotions and things that happen in that first episode and it left me like what the actual hell did i just watch that's the first thing i thought when the first episode ended i was like what the hell did i get myself into what is this it is quite bizarre and i didn't know if i was loving it or if i was just uncomfortable but i feel like this show was made on purpose to make people uncomfortable in different levels um you know apart from the fandom we also have a lot of sexual sex scenes a lot of sexual scenes we have some quite raw moments of violence and there is a lot of themes that are explored here that might make you feel quite uncomfortable many um shots as well but i feel like that was part of why they created this series is to bring awareness of something that is quite modern um in our society and just make us feel uncomfortable about a set of things there are some shots that are just so well executed like maybe a camera just going around a room and there are some uncomfortable moments that you almost wish you could look away but at the same time you're so hooked that you cannot stop watching even though it is extremely uncomfortable what you're watching i felt like they did such a great job with this character development in this tv show you're going to see dre as a character navigating all of these different scenarios she's going to move location a couple of times and it almost you know gives you this feeling of a serial killer um like henry portrait of a serial killer and i just love to see this done in this tv show you guys know i love true crime and this show felt in ways like an crazy awkward true crime documentary the series sometimes has of intentionally campy atmosphere they also play buzzing sounds when dre is about to get violent again the score was also such a great addition to the soundscape and it complemented bizarre scenes there is a central metaphor as well in this tv show which is hunger and every time dre would have these kind of violent feelings she would get extremely hungry and i felt like they would have developed that a little bit more than they did in the tv show i felt like at the beginning i was extremely hooked and i was loving every little bit of it and then at some point i became either either numb or i feel like then they lost a little bit the the plot and they focus a lot more on just like shocking scenes and it just felt a little bit more how can i put it disjointed the whole thing and i was not so excited about the last episode and the ending as i should have been maybe the um pre-last episode was quite interesting because it is like an episode by itself it doesn't really follow what we have seen so far it's like almost a mockumentary of a true crime and even though i absolutely love that episode because it really went through all the tropes and all the types of conversations and things that they show in these true crime documentaries and how things are exploited and stuff i loved it so much but it felt super disconnected from everything else especially because they put it before the last episode so after me watching that i was not kind of connected with dre in in the same way for me to enjoy the finale as much as i would have wanted to the horror in this um show it's quite effective because it is the horrors of a true serial killer you know like a true crime show and i felt like the horror was quite raw and unexpected at times and it was very terrifying because all the situations were things that were so realistic in a way that could happen anytime and it was just <laughs> unexpected at times that you would be like damn girl and I really enjoy the horror i think it's quite intense the violence is very gory and there's a lot of blood so you can enjoy all of that but at the same time the show did not feed from those scenes they didn't prolong them more than necessary they didn't exploit 
the death scenes they they were just there for the character's development in a way but they didn't exploit the horror and then we have Fishback that plays Dre she did such an amazing job I read in interviews that she was hesitant about this TV show she didn't know if she wanted to do it because of the type of character because she knows this show is gonna create a lot of controversy and it is a show that's gonna make people uncomfortable but she said that this role scared her and that was reason enough for her to do it um, and also she wanted to represent a black female serial killer and I just am so glad that she took the role because she is absolutely amazing. The way she played this character with all of the psychological elements to it and the way that she was able to go from comedy to drama to the darkest, deepest, you know, um, violent moments. It was just amazing um, how good she was in this TV show and I feel like she does deserve an award for this. I almost felt like in a way she was a little bit like Patrick Bateman in American Psycho um, and I loved his character so much so if you loved him you might also like the character of Dre. Dre is a character that has always felt like an outcast and at some point something clicks in her brain. <laughs> and she just goes on a killing spree and they ended up giving the show a three out of five for many reasons because I feel like this is such a good kind of interpretation modern interpretation of the tropes of the serial killer and they did such a good satire about also serial killer documentaries and things like that um I felt like they were really smart about it there is some black comedy in it, there is intense violence. They did such a good job with the casting. Fishbone is amazing as Dre. She's absolutely fantastic. Just for her, you should watch it. And I was pleasantly surprised by Billie Eilish, who is also in the show. And I loved her character so much. Um, I love to see her. So I do hope that she will be involved in future you know, projects and movies and TV shows because I really did enjoy her character um, and the way that she acts. So yeah, what can I say, you guys? I feel like I do recommend you Swarm. You gotta be ready for it because it is quite graphic when it comes to the horror, the violence and the sex. So there is a lot here. Um, but I do recommend you guys to give it a chance because it is quite weird and different and those are the things that I want to see. Um, it was not boring at all. I was hooked. I wanted, you know, to keep binging the show. I binged the show in, in a day um, because I really wanted to know what was going to happen next and that is a good sign, you guys. <laughs> anyway, let me know down below if you watched the show, if you were considering watching it or if maybe you hadn't heard of it until I talk about it today. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys as always so much for watching and I hope to see you all as always in our next coffee time. Bye!